What is going on everybody? Today we are going to analyze the first string offensive line of the Chicago Bears against the Tennessee Titans. To me, watching this unit really impressed me. Now obviously Nate Davis did not play at that right guard position. We all know he hasn't practiced a whole lot in the offseason. Obviously he is the starter, but I will say Jatari Carter filling in at that right guard position looked pretty good. And Carter was the only one that actually played more than seven snaps. The other four guys that are all going to start from the left tackle, left guard center, and right tackle, those four guys are slated to start, and I really want to analyze the tape. I'm going to start right away with Braxton Jones here. Watch Braxton Jones get vertical here in his pass set, and he almost looks more comfortable to me than he did last season. And, and you know, every guy takes the year to leap, but Braxton Jones... Just getting out of his stance, firing out, setting up in his set. He looks good. And you see that he's going to make contact with this defensive end. And he shuts it down. Now, he does grab onto the shoulder pads. And he does let the defensive end get into his chest plates. That's okay, right? I think if you're able to latch on and really anchor down, if it works for you, it's okay to kind of utilize that. And then if you look at the right tackle here in Darnell Wright. And some of you guys may not know this if you're new to the channel. But Darnell Wright was my number one overall offensive lineman from the past draft class i really think this guy's going to be one of the best tackles in the nfl but one of the things that i'm already kind of noticing is this guy's using independent hands and he's using different types of moves to kind of win and i want to show you guys this play because if you don't slow it down you may not recognize kind of what happens within this play so the first thing you'll notice is darnell wright is going to punch with both hands and you see it right there i'm going to go ahead and, and back this up you're going to see him punch with both hands on the defensive lineman. And then the left hand is actually going to drop off. And this is referred to as using independent hands. Use one hand at a time. And the reason why you do this, why you drop off that left hand, is because if the defensive lineman breaks the right hand, in this instance, this defensive lineman is going to fork up that right hand right there. Well, then you just bring your left hand back because you weren't utilizing it. And you get that left hand and you grab onto the defensive lineman with the left hand. So you're using independent hands to win. And I know this may seem like a small concept, just kind of thinking about it, right? Using one hand at a time, but all the great offensive tackles do this. Using one hand at a time is the way to win. Now, initially you can use both hands to kind of slow the guy down a little bit, but then you want to use one hand. And if that one hand gets broken by the defensive lineman, well, you have that second hand to recover. And in this instance, you see that with Darnell Wright. I'm telling you guys, this guy's going to be a very, very, very good football player because he understands these little concepts. And I know some people are going to say it doesn't matter. You know, maybe you're overreacting a little bit. Trust me when I say this, this is not an overreaction. It's the little things that make up great offensive linemen. And you guys can see both the center Cody White here and the left guard and Tevin Jenkins. They both do their job as well. Tevin Jenkins is going to take on the defensive tackle. There is a defensive line game that, that kind of happens, but uh, the nose here doesn't really do a good job, right? Or the one technique defensive tackle it doesn't really do a good job. You see the guy trying to kind of come around, but let's go ahead and get into the next rep. All right, you guys, let's go ahead and get into the second play of the game. You're going to get a power run to the right and the play doesn't work. It only picks up two yards. Now I want to analyze this play a little bit and kind of show you guys where I think it went wrong. So this play is, is a power run, right? You're going to get a lot of these double teams. You're going to get the left guard to kind of pull out. Number 18 is technically supposed to set up to the inside. And his job is to try to force this guy over to the right. Now, this does not work. You're going to see this guy absolutely crush this downwards. And he's going to, in that process, take number 18 and kind of force him back to the left. And if you guys keep an eye, Robert Tanya in the tight end, you're going to see that he basically gets pushed. And, and really, the hole doesn't open up because of that, right? At the same time, if you guys watch Tevin Jenkins, Jenkins is the polling man on this play. And because 18 here gets pushed so far back this way, you're going to see that Jenkins, who is supposed to go through this lane and pick up whoever it is that kind of flashes first. And of course, the fullback would kind of go through here and kick someone out as well, which should have opened the lane right through there. But with that, Jenkins basically runs right into number 18. Right, He runs right into that tight end. And from there, there's just nothing that gets created. Now, there are some positives with this play. If you guys watch Darnell Wright's block here, as well as the tight end, uh, some of these guys are going to kind of move a lot of these guys over to the left. But just watch number 85, Cole Clement, as well as Darnell Wright. Watch them make contact with this guy, and they absolutely move him. I mean, look at that. That's movement right there. You don't want to give up that much movement if you're a defensive tackle. 
You got to hold your ground. Otherwise, this is how lanes kind of develop. And what I mean by that is if Tanyan sticks to his block here, if these two guys move this guy, let's say way over here, well, then the lane between that defensive tackle and the defensive end kind of gets created. Obviously, this play doesn't work, but it is good movement and it is good backside ceiling from uh, you see Braxton Jones here. He's going to cover Tevin Jenkins, so he's going to have to get to the inside of that guy. Uh, White here kind of gets there as well. Um, so both the right guard, center, and left tackle all cover nicely. The right tackle does a good job. Tevin Jenkins isn't able to kind of adjust himself on this play. And obviously, Tanya kind of gets blown up. So the play only picks up two yards. Let's go ahead and get to the third rep. Because this is the 62-yard touchdown. Uh, really, really nice shot by the guys up front. I mean, this right here is very impressive, not only by the guys, but by the wide receiver. Moore does a fantastic job seeing it, right? And I want to point this out really quickly. Uh, you got to be careful here. You know, he starts to celebrate just a second early here, and uh, the ball could have been knocked out right there, right? This is something that I actually saw live, and, and I said, you got to be careful. And obviously, I'm sure the coaching staff's going to talk to him about that. But let's talk about this play. Up front, the guys do a fantastic job. We'll go ahead and just kind of watch it real quick, and then we'll analyze it. But you really see it open up. And I know some people talk about Braxton Jones and how he may have pushed his guy in the back. And that may be true, but to me, he does a good enough job where you're not going to call this. The linebacker is kind of running to get here, and he hits him to the side. And I know you could technically call it, but you can also let it go the way he does here. And don't underestimate the block by Darnell Mooney here. He's going to set up and, and give the receiver the inside. Of course, Tevin Jenkins is going to get up here. You got some backside seals. 69 is going to go up. But the blocking really opens this play up. Tevin Jenkins gets there. You see Braxton Jones puts his guy out of the dirt. I mean, that right there is nasty. That, that's the physical style of football that I think the Bears are going to bring. I remember watching the Bears offensive line last preseason, and I said this offensive line's a good offensive line. I don't know why people hate on the line so much. And I know there was a lot of pressure last season on the quarterback, but that's that's his own thing. That's guys growing. That's guys getting to kind of know one another. That's a rookie left tackle. Um, and to me, this year, the offensive line's pretty much the same, but if not better, right? Because now Cody White here goes to the center position. At the same time, you bring in Nate Davis, and he's now the right guard. And to me, Darnell Wright's going to be a very good football player. So just overall, I think this offense line is going to be so much better this year. And on the third play of the game, it hits for a touchdown. Never underestimate this fact here. This play does not score a touchdown if the offensive linemen don't block it properly. It's a big, big part of this play hitting for a touchdown. And I, I can't underestimate it, right? Some people are going to continue to overlook it. But this block right here by Cody White here is a smart-ass block because this defense lineman could possibly chase this from the backside as the, the receiver here is going to have to cut it back, right, for his blockers. So White here here does a really, really nice job, and that's an underrated block in itself. And then 69 gets up there, and he picks the guy off. I mean, it just worked perfectly. Like, you can't draw this play up any better. And again, it is the offensive linemen that are executing it. Right. So to me, the receiver here has to give a shout out to the offense line for this. Now, obviously, the receiver makes a guy miss here or there. You know, he finds the, the lane and, you know, he's a yak guy as well. Right. He can do kind of do it all. So I'm very excited, man. This just Chicago Bears offense is going to be underrated this season. Uh, definitely don't sleep on them. But let's go ahead and get to the next rep. Alrighty, guys. So the second drive of the game, first play of that drive. You got Khalil Herbert, who's going to get a toss to the right. Darnell Wright pulls. Cole Clement kind of gets out there. And you get a 11-yard run just like that. I mean, this is beautifully blocked. Let's go ahead and break this down piece by piece. Uh, first and foremost, I think the natural block to kind of look at has to be Darnell Wright. I mean, look at how clean of a block this is. This is more of a two-for-one situation. So he pulls out there. At this point, he has to read, right? He has to read. Should I take the corner? Is my receiver here going to be able to pick off this linebacker? Do I need to take the initial threat? These are things that this guy has to process all during a live play. And he ends up taking the corner and he's going to get a piece of that linebacker who the receiver does not do that good of a job right there with the right hand. And don't think that's just an accident. Don't think that this guy just accidentally bumped into the second guy. This is by design, right? He knows where the play is going. He's going to slow down the first guy. And then he get, lets the first guy go, and then he's going to use his right hand to grab onto that second guy right there. Some people may say that this is by accident. It is not by accident. 
As a former offensive lineman, I could tell you when I used to pull out and get in space, I would have to process the different things. I would have to read and react and say, you know, I, I block one guy, but then there's a second guy that's kind of here. And you have to decide, like, should I take on that second guy? Maybe it's just the right hand. In this instance, it's just the right hand to slow that guy down. This is by design. This kind of tells you that processing power that Darnell Wright has, right? So to me, it's a really nice job by him. A couple other blocks here that I, I want to point out. The right guard has to be able to pick off this three technique D tackle. The center has to pick off the linebacker. Tevin Jenkins has to pick off the two eye technique. And Braxton Jones has to get out here because this safety here is the backside chase. And Braxton Jones has to pick him off. All of these guys are going to do their job. Let's go ahead and watch the right guard here. Watch him pick off that D tackle. He's going to hook him. And just look at how he turns his body. This is why Ryan Poles is an absolute genius. To be able to get a guy in Jatari Carter in the seventh round of the 2022 NFL draft. And you already can see this guy's a good freaking football player. This guy right here is going to be a long-term swing guy, I think, for the Bears. Um, and then they'll have to decide with Tevin Jenkins, Nate Davis. They'll have to decide, you know, is Carter going to take over or are we going to just kind of keep in one of those two guys, maybe continue to pay them long-term, right? Obviously, those will be decisions by the GM. But you see this guy right here do a great job turning his body, positioning himself in the correct spot. This is what I like to watch right here, right? Really, really, really nice job. This play doesn't work without his block. Or without the center's block. Watch watch White here. Get up to that second level defender. This is not an easy block. Right? This is not by any means an easy block. But the angle he takes is beautiful. And the linebacker tries to go underneath it. At that point, you're not going to make the play. Um, although he does actually one of the guys that makes the play. But, I mean, this is still a you know 11 yard gain. But, again, it's, it's the blocks right across the board. If you guys watch Tevin Jenkins block. Tevin Jenkins is going to snatch down this defensive tackle. Tevin Jenkins is a smart-ass football player, and this is why the guy's a smart-ass football player. To me, the Bears are going to have a top-five offensive line, and that's not a hot take. I think that's just a fact. These guys up front are all very, very, very smart. They're high IQ football players. These guys are very good on tape, and you see it. They're coached well. They know blocking angles. They... 100% get it, and I'm very, very excited to watch the Chicago Bears. I love Tevin Jenkins. I think he's one of the best cards in the NFL, and you see Braxton Jones get all the way out there and then set himself up and turn his head. Most tackles don't do this. You know, there are tackles that are like run directly towards this guy, and then the guy kind of gets over the top. Braxton Jones is going to run way out here and then turn his head and just wait because he knows where the play is going. These are smart plays by all of these different guys, and you pick up 11 yards. That's this beautiful job. Let's go ahead and get into the next rep. You got a four-yard inside run. Pretty nice job uh, by the offensive lineman. Uh, they're playing bully ball up there. You know, uh, you got you got to have these runs. Not everything's going to be an inside-outside zone. You got to have these quick duo power type runs. In this instance, they all do a nice job. Uh, Cleo Herbert may have read this wrong, although it is kind of hard. And, and let's go ahead and just kind of break it down a little bit. So right away at the point of attack, you got two double teams here. And these two guys have to process it up to the linebackers here. You got a seal here, here. And I believe this tight end will seal here, but he may actually try getting to the inside of this safety. And you can see that as the play kind of develops, Herbert's going to cut this over to the left. And Braxton Jones is actually trying to seal this guy to the inside, right? Or at least it looks like he's maybe trying to seal him to the outside. I don't know. It's hard to tell, but he doesn't win his block here. You can see the defensive tackle is able to kind of overpower him. And in this instance, he's going to be the guy to make the play. And this is a hard, hard, you know, read by Cleo Herbert, because I will say, when they're double teaming here and the read is to this linebacker, if the linebacker steps up here, naturally with the double team, this guy would probably go this way. So I think it is an interesting play regardless, um, but it's still a four yard game, right? And, and the game of football is all about, you know, four yards at a time. You If you pick up four yards on every play, you're winning the Super Bowl. doesn't matter, right? You'll never not convert a first down, right? So let's go ahead and jump into the next rep. Alrighty guys, check this rep out. You have an outside zone to the right. The running back's gonna lose a yard here because somebody makes a mistake. And I believe it's going to be the right guard that makes this mistake. Um, and I say that based off of how these plays are kind of blocked. So this is a outside zone. So all of these offensive linemen should be taking 
a step to the right here. Every single one of these guys should be blocking a gap to the right. And the beauty of these outside zone plays is when a guy slants hard to the inside, by these guys taking these outside steps, they should be able to seal these guys off. And you always got to block the defensive lineman before you get up to the linebackers. On an inside zone is different. You don't always block the D lineman first. So in this instance, what's going to happen is if you guys watch the right guard, he's going to double down, right? He keeps that left hand as a drag hand, and he's going to block it up to the linebacker. And he gets too far up. You got to take the initial threat to your right, and he doesn't even look. And maybe it's because pre-snap this guy so far out. But he doesn't look towards that defensive end. And in this instance, the defensive end slants to the inside. Darnell Wright believes that the defensive end is going to get picked up by number 69. That obviously does not happen. And you can see that that defensive end goes unblocked and he blows the play up. Again, I think it's just like miscommunication. Something that you'll work on, you'll get better at. Um, but I think there's also some good blocks within this play. If you guys watch Cody Whitehair, very underrated football player in my opinion. Uh, he's going to uh, block this where he seals... This defensive lineman off. This is perfect. I know in this play, he this guy gets close to the running back, obviously. But no one blocked this guy. And that's the only reason why this guy's even close. Had that guy been blocked, I mean, look at the lane. Like Tevin Jenkins is blocked up here. Braxton Jones, Cole Kamai have back, uh, sealed the backside off. If this one guy gets blocked, I mean, look at the lane from this guy here to these guys out here. I mean, that's a massive lane. And I know these plays pop. When it's blocked correctly. In this instance, it just wasn't blocked correctly. Not a big deal. Let's go ahead and get to the next rep. And this is the final play here. This is a third and eight. 56 yard touchdown by Cleo Herbert. I mean, this was just, it, it was designed perfectly. Um, but some people do say the offense linemen were downfield. And yes, Justin Fields has to get the ball out faster. He did have a lot of pressure. Let's talk about this play. Let's watch this from the end zone angle. In my opinion, this is, this is perfect. Obviously, Fields does get pressure, so he has to run away from the pressure, and then he throws it kind of late, and some people will say the offensive linemen were downfield. You can definitely call that, right? Um, I don't think they're so far downfield. Uh, there's a rule, I believe it's three yards plus and minus from the uh, from the line of scrimmage on passes, so you could get three yards downfield. So I'm not sure if they were past the three-yard marker when it was actually thrown. They may have been, but regardless, it was a perfectly designed play because Cleo Herbert has the football and he has his right guard and center out there kind of blocking and he's patient. Uh, Cody White here does a great job with the block there. And you see that Cleo Herbert just runs right by it. And this is, you know, it, it's interesting because some people are talking about Justin Fields and say, oh, he had two long runs. So he threw for negative yards and, you know, his guys did what they did. But Justin Fields is getting help now. And it's not just that he's getting help. The offensive linemen are coming together. And more than the offense linemen coming together, he's gotten weapons. The the second year system, everything is just going, in my opinion, perfectly for the, the Bears. And they're in a really good spot. I don't know if they'll make the playoffs this season. I, I really don't know how good that defense could become. We've heard great things about Tremaine Edmonds. Jack Sanborn was really good last season. Unique Ngakwe was brought in among some other guys. And I think a lot of it will depend on the defense. But from the offensive's perspective i think this offense is going to absolutely explode this season the offense line's very very good and don't be surprised when they're a top five unit by the end of the year if there's rankings out there that are saying this is not a top five offensive lineman unit block those people get rid of those people because those people don't know what they're talking about very very good unit i hope you guys enjoyed this video it's probably a lot longer than it needed to be because it was only uh, seven snaps but if you guys enjoyed it and are watching up to this point leave a comment below i always appreciate you guys and I'll see you guys next time with another video.